here we are for Farina reporting. And um, I'm going to start off with some slides, and then we will transition into it's actually a demo of moving around files and so forth, and what it actually looks like to, to put this stuff together. Okay? Um, and so, yes, I'm Elliot um, with the oddly named Mercury Motos. There's a story there. Someday I will share that with the world. Um, I am flying directly out of here, so please, Elliot at MercuryMotos.com, if you want to catch up with me and ask me any questions about all of this stuff a little later. Um, what this session is and isn't, you know. Boy, this is the look at something. It's very much in beta with me. I'm trying out something with the client. It's not fully in place yet, but I wanted to come and say, hey, I'm doing this thing, and I think it's pretty cool. Um, it's only for Drupal, and really, you, SQL is the key to it. And if you feel reasonably comfortable dealing with SQL, or you have somebody who can deal with SQL, then, then you're on to something. Um, but if, Drupal and SQL, well, if you don't have Drupal and SQL scares you, um, then this isn't for you. I'm not making any recommendations in here about why Farina is better than anything else out there. It's a tool. It goes in your toolbox. Use it when it's appropriate, okay? Um, yeah, no cage match. And this also isn't going to be a full-on how-to on Farina. There's other stuff out there. So the general background on this one is that, you know, Civi Report is out there and it does a lot of great things. And yet, A, there are times when we need more. And so we go looking for other solutions. And then these BI, you know, business intelligence solutions out there, Jasper, Pentahose, and others. Um, and these can do wonderful, amazing things. Just outright wow. But some of them are just crazy expensive. And if they're not crazy expensive, then they require, such as you know, Jasper, you want to use the Community Edition, great. Now you've got to um, install a Tomcat server alongside. Well, where are you going to do that? How are you going to do that? Can you even do that on your shared host? I've got these clients on City Hosting. Tomcat is not an option. So what do I do? All right. And Drupal Views does wonders. Wonderful thing. I mean, who in here can live without Drupal Views? Nobody, right? Um, I mean, yeah, and why would you want to? Just so, um, but my position on Drupal is twofold. One, Drupal Views is meant for bringing up content. It is not meant for doing reports. And you can strong arm it into doing reports for you with the addition of a bunch of modules and da 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 da. And then, translating exactly what you want to do into whatever language somebody else has come up with for it. And then do lots and lots of clicking. And I, I don't like doing lots of clicking. Um, that will come up often in the presentation. So, um, but a note also on CV Report. Lola, you did a great job with, you know, with CV Report 101. But also, I mean, wow, still, to go in there and tangle with CV Report is tough. And you know, when you have to think about PHP classes and arrays and SQL aliases and using PHP debug and so on and so forth. I mean, I know it's one, that's 101, and the problem is most people are not even at that level of being able to do something. And frankly, I don't want to be as well. So um, now, how does customizing city report make you feel? Anybody know that bridge? Common arrows bridge, okay? Or, you know, does it make you feel like this? Um, or does it just leave you cold? Um, make you want to go to sleep? Or do you just plain want to just give up? Roll over, right? Say, never mind, okay? So, um, a tangling with city report can be difficult. It does. Really, what it does is tremendous. And you know, it's, it's tied into the permissions module. It will email stuff out for you. It'll produce nice CSV files. does all of those great things. But if you need something outside of that, it's just difficult to move it along. So here comes Farina. And this is a Drupal module. It's available for version 6, an older version of Farina, but it's still supported, as well as version 7. Um, it's got fairly rapid development. Um, there's a site. 
there's in module help, he has a lot of help files which are installed with the module itself. Okay, a lot of them. Um, he's got a forum which is fairly active, and then there are the videos um, as well on YouTube. Now, it runs on your Drupal server using PDO. So it just you drop it in place, there you go, you're ready to go. Also, it can pull data from multiple databases. It is not limited to your Drupal database. Right? You can use PDO to go out there and access any database to which you have access. And I, I just haven't gotten around to it, but I'm imagining coming up with a little dashboard that shows me every one of my clients' websites um, and you know what version of software I've got them running just so I can see who I've, got, who I've forgotten to go on update and whatever else. All right. So um, in a nutshell, that's it. Why did I start using this? Well, I had a client with a big range of reports they needed to do. Um, they have a lot of custom data that we had to put in place, and they need a lot of summary statistics. Also, they're not that technically savvy, and so trying to even get them to think about what it is they really needed was hard. So I wanted something that was as flexible as possible and I could adapt easily later on. Um, so I didn't get locked into one particular thing. Each group within the organization, and there are about five groups, um, has their own custom data, their own granting agencies, their own reporting needs that each granting agency needs out of it. And some of them have multiple granting agencies, and they need to be able to report back to them just like this. And it, it drives me crazy. But that's how the granting agencies want it. That's how the client needs it. Fine, we'll make it happen that way. All right, so I went off and elected to try this as a different approach. And so, just a quick list of things that Farina will do once you have it in place. Um, a, you can do custom parameters via dropdown. So I can control exactly what somebody gets to choose as a parameter to go into a report. It's not just a general class of things. I can specify exactly what it is. Um, it does cross tab slash pivot tables dynamically on the fly. Um, so I can plug in some data. Whatever it gets returned to, it will flip it, put it into a cross tab. I've got one of those I'll show you. I'm not doing this right now, but it does easy color coding of results with CSS. So you can build in something where, you know, if the value is less than 10, it's red. If it's more than 10, it's yellow. If it's more than 20, it's green, right? Very simple to put in place. There's this report builder interface, which is currently experimental in it. I'll show it to you quickly. Um, it's a way that once you have the minimal elements in place, you can let users go do their thing. Um, you can, with another module, create blocks within Drupal out of a report. So you can take this report and drop it wherever you want on your site. Um, you can also insert it directly into a views page. So you can come up with what you want and then shove it into views for all of the other great things that views will do. All right? Um, which of this course means we can borrow Mark's work and we can take that and shove it back into the dashboard of the city CRM. Um, it, all, all the parameters come in via URL as well. So you can have multiple pages bookmarked, and the only difference is what's the URL, you know, the parameter in there. And uh, finally, it does graphing and charting. I'm not doing that yet, so I'm not going to be showing you any of that, but it does it, OK? So caveats. There's a learning curve here. Um, this, you know, <laughs> it's not all the golden land. Um, SQL statements are not future-proof and not necessarily platform-proof either. Right? because it's operating without an abstraction layer um, in the same way. So it's possible that you write something that works for MySQL of this particular version, but it's not going to work for a different SQL server. So it's not necessarily platform independent. Um, and then also, I have to point out, you know, geez, we're working outside of core here. And um, I do kind of wonder if I'm being a bad community member by not, you know, slaying the dragon of how to make city reports easier for me to do. Um, but hey, there we are. So also, uh, somewhere else in the presentation I have, I'll mention it here. Um, there's no guarantee that 
you know, with another version of Civi that your data model is going to work, right? Because you're writing your own SQL, you're out there, you're on your own, and yes, you're several thousand feet up on El Capitan there, okay? All right, so there are two main pieces to Farina. One, it's built around the idea that you've got little blocks of SQL that you write. And then the second one is you present it. And those two things are separate. They are two different files, literally. They're physically separate within the system. This means that you can move stuff around pretty easily. It's modular. And of course, you can take the results from one data block and feed them through any of multiple presentation layers that you choose to. Data blocks. These are really straightforward little SQL queries. And um, you can put some conditionals in them. Um, you can use include statements. They have parameters in them, or tokens, if you will. And so they're modular, reusable logic bits. Little quirks in them, though. I want to point out some quirks. It took me a little while to figure out. One, if you're using it, you got to use single quotes in your SQL. Double quotes in your SQL, it loses its mind. Um, the parser expects all of its comments with a double um, hyphen to be at the very beginning of the line. If there's anything in front of that, it doesn't know what to do and it ignores it, and then you wonder what in the heck's going on. Um, there's no abstraction layer, so your SQL, you have to pay attention to your SQL. And um, I don't know that I'm paying that much attention to my <coughs> SQL code, but if you ever want to run on anything other than MySQL and InnoDB, for instance, it may not work. Um, it's tied directly to Drupal permissions. And so you can see right up at the very top here, it says access equals access content. So that's a permission which Drupal puts in, uh, which the Freedom module puts in place. And so any, um, any permission within Drupal, you can put into any given data block, all right? So you wanna make your own permissions, Break by a little module, drop your own permissions in, then you can choose how somebody accesses this. By the way, with the nesting include equals, it ignores access rules within nested ones. And so it's just the top level one that it goes along with. Um, so you can see here, I've got an include. What else do I have in here that's interesting? Um, there's surely there's a parameter in here. Huh, what do you know? I don't, uh, uh, no, I don't have a parameter. Anyway, I'll show you one later. Um, then there's the presentation layer, part two. And this is using XHTML. It's pretty clean. I like it. Um, and it also has some capabilities on its own as um, in XML. So it can, you know, you can tell it to make a sum for instance, out of something. It doesn't have to be done in the SQL layer. And these things decoupled. This is what one of them looks like. And this is a full one for a report, by the way. This is the whole thing for it. Um, and boy, usually I'm tall enough that I don't desire a laser pointer. <laughs> no, I'm not. Um, I'll pull this one up in the editor and we can run through it. But in short, what this one is doing is we've got a large parameter block up there, which is saying these are all of the parameters which are available and how they can be selected. Um, right down here, we have a rewrite, essentially, of the field, which is going to make it clickable. So um, it'll go directly to a given contact if we want to. And then this is actually the rendering of the data itself. All right. Do you have to write that file, or is it generated? Yeah, you can write it or you can cheat and use the data explorer thing that they have, the report builder, and it will put most of that together for you. And then you can put it in place. But I'm finding that once I have a general version of this, then I'm just reusing that and editing it as text. Um, all right, so how's it working? All right. I got it with one client, and they're really at the base of an adoption curve here. Um, and it's, it's a slow one. I mean, Nicholas, you were just talking about this, you know. <laughs> it's organizational change here. And um, they're coming along, all right? There's a bit of a learning curve for me on this one, but really, it's mostly one of terminology. 
because I already know what I want to do in SQL, and that's what drew me to this, is that instead of having to translate my thoughts of what I knew I wanted into somebody else's version of how to do this in views or something, I'll just go to SQL and I'll write the darn query and then put it up. So, um, by, oh, by the way, it's really very quick. The SQL queries are very thin. There's no extra PHP processing on it. So it's very lightweight when it comes to operating. Um, I found it to be really easy to modify and expand. So I you know, write a report, put it up there. They say, oh, we need this other parameter. OK. Oh, we need another variable. OK. And I'm looking at you know six minutes to modify a report and get it back to them. That was easy. That makes them pretty darn happy. All right. Now, uh, part three. What? OK. Um, Farina has this experimental report builder. And the way this works is you write your data blocks. That is, you provide the SQL that goes in. And then they can grab those data blocks and start making pages and reports based upon those. This is in development still. It's experimental. It works mostly, but um, not entirely. I haven't played around with it all that much. Because A, it involves clicking, okay? And B, I don't really want the client to have it right now. They're not ready for it. So um, we'll just, you know, we'll bring that on board later. All right. When it comes to deploying this, I think it's going to be really easy to deploy this across sites. The Farina module is really easy to install. It goes in. I think it has one table that it puts into the database. That's it. So it hardly touches the database. Um, you have to tell it where your data blocks are, your SQL queries are. You have to tell it where you're going to put your um, XHTML template files. And then it just kind of goes off and does its thing. Um, and so you can just copy everything into place. <coughs> done. There's no extra insertion of classes into the database. No extra steps to validate. It's just there it is. Um, again, hazard. There's no SQL abstraction layer, and you've got potential issues. So let's go ahead and take a look at this in action. All right. So let's put this away. Let's put that away. Oh, here's YouTube. If you search for Forina, you get it. Forina is also a Swedish word that apparently means to make connections. Um, so, you know, you start to get some other fun things in, in Swedish, apparently. So, be a little vacation for you. All right. Um, so there they are on Drupal.org. All right. So, I'm running this off of uh, a local MAMP interface. I copied things down. Some parts of it didn't quite take, and I just haven't bothered to figure out exactly why. It's working really well on the client. This right here in the green box, this is it doing its debug work, which I've told it to do. And it's just dumping out the entire query as it has interpreted it after it's gone through and evaluated the tokens, the conditional statements. So it's really easy to say, you know, why in the world am I not getting what I expected? Oh, you know, this is what it's doing. It's very transparent in that way. Notice it has two different queries here, one of which is this tiny little one. And that's um, a parameter query that I'm running. Let me reload this. Um, oh, no, okay. So this is just a simple little query. Um, for all of these people and if they've attended a particular class and how many times. And well, they've all attended once and they haven't updated anything more about it. All right? So, and, all right, back to this. Farina gives you this handy My Reports page and it lists everything out. Basic reports, Chicas, I've got Drupal administration reports that it gives me. I have early childhood education. I have the Empresas group. They all have their own reports. All I have to do is define in the template file, say this is in this group, and it creates the group, and it adds it to it. I don't have to do any other steps to create the group. Then I can just go and get, you know, click happy, 
and see what's going on. And I can take a look here at, gee, you know, there's a list of the schools that they're supporting. I can see how many members I've got in each school. Um, and there's an attendance summary, attendance dates report, a lunch and migrant status report, and a count of the grades grouping. So these are all sub-reports, which I can drill down into. So it's like, gee, I'd like to see what's going on with attendance at Cornelius. Well, here we go. Now this is something that I would like to color code again, just haven't gotten to it yet. Um, and this is all based upon the activity table. How many times have they done each type of activity? Hmm, all right, now if I want to, you'll notice, well, I don't know if you read that down the bottom, but um, all of these are linked back directly to the City CityCRM contact record itself. So if I click that, I go to their contact record, built in. Back to my reports. Um, oh, well here, let me show you this one before further. This is fun. If I want to see what specific dates, oh, why is this? Demoed. I have been demoed. Okay, I may have to pull up the live page for you on that one um, to show you that. So this is on the outside, and just a quick sense of you know the reports that you can build off of it. All right, there's nothing, there's nothing whiz bang in what I'm showing you here. Okay, the client, there's nothing whiz bang about this. This isn't, this is nothing that you couldn't do using other tools, but it's just a question of how you get there. So let's take a look at what's going on behind the scenes. And this right here is a report in, in CIVI CRM. This is one of the templates in CIVI CRM for uh, contact detail. All right. Now there's, it's got a lot more going on in here that I'm trying to do, but it's, it's got a lot. And if you're trying to customize it, there's just a lot to figure out. Whereas, this is the main query that I was running behind that attendance report. And this one's specific to this one particular group. And I've got my access control statement. I have a select statement. And right in the middle of my select statement, I have a conditional, which is if I'm doing a, if I've requested a particular activity name, the name of an activity type, essentially, then I want to include this other information. All right? Um, I've got various join statements, and then here again, I have a conditional. If I'm going to include in my query that uh, select statement, I've got to join the right tables in. So I do, otherwise it gets left alone. I don't have to worry about it. This little bit right here, the colon, uh, P can underscore. It, can you make it a little bit bigger? Um, no. How's that? Is that better? Okay. Um, the colon P activity name, that's a variable or a token. Okay, that it comes along and fills. And that's just my own uh, naming scheme. P underscore means parameter. It's been fed in. Um, and the colon in front of it is Farina's way of saying this is a variable or a token. Um, and so I have multiples of these in here. It's like if I've requested activity name, if I've requested just a school year, a school name, um, start date or calendar quarter off of this, the query just adapts and returns that information. Right? I find this personally to be transparent. I can work on that. It seems straight, you know, for me that's pretty straightforward. The other thing I love about it is I can go like this. I can go, ah, copy, let's go over here, let's drop this in, and then it's like, you know, okay, let's remove that, let's remove that, get, you know, because MySQL doesn't know how to handle that. Um, and then I just need to find right here the activity name, which in this case I know is something like this. And um, you know, I have to remove a few more things. But I can run this one and, it's like, and validate it. It's like, OK, this runs in SQL. This works. Great. Now I take that and, I try, and then I'll pull it apart 
and put in the conditionals um, and validate what I'm doing. It's really quite easy. Um, so that's what one of the SQL blocks looks like. The and this is what the template file, the HTML, XHTML file looks like. And let me just walk you through this one pretty quickly. Okay, gee, the title, and then here's that category, or the grouping, right? So when it goes back to that My Reports page, where it had the different reports broken out, if I repeat a title, or repeat a group name, it adds the title of this report to that group. If I come up with a new one, it just puts it in place. Parameters. What's the parameter name? That's what gets passed through. And then here's what's fun, the data source. I get to use another data block to define the selection list for the parameters. So I have complete control over what's put in front of them. Right? I get to define the type of it, put a label in front of it, and whether or not it's required. It'll do multi-select. Um, it'll do binary, it'll do open text, all right? There are multiple ways of putting in the parameters. So I've got a bunch of parameters in there. Um, there's, you can stick it into the menu if you want to as well. You can, you can force it directly into a Drupal menu from here. Um, and this field part is where it takes a piece coming back from the query and it rewrites it. So in this case, I'm taking the sort name which is returned and I'm saying it's a link to here, and um, notice that in this instance, the uh, parameters are put into uh, curly braces instead. Each, each half of Farina has its own language conventions, because one half is SQL and the other half is HTML. They get evaluated differently. And then I have a div. And the div, notice, this is where I have the block. So this is where the data is coming from. You can put as many blocks as you want into one report, each of them coming from a different source. So when I mentioned earlier that if you're thinking about doing this across all of my client sites so I can see you know, what version of software I've got them running, I can have a block for each client and a query which is specific to a given data block. Each data block is locked to a, um, to a particular database. But I can go off and look at all of them at once and put it all on one page. Conceptually, kind of you're doing a union? Conceptually, this is the same as a union, okay. but literally, it's this. It would just be, and I mean, I can do this. That's, that's all it is. Um, let's save so that. Yes. Question, this is presented as a table in the result. You have graphs, it, charts. Yeah, that's correct. And uh, here, um, if, um, here, this one. Oh, no, not that one. Um, the this is one that presents it a little differently and all of that happens right here where I declare it let me make that larger for you again where I'm declaring this to be a cross tab and it's using a particular Farina renderer of crosstab. Okay. And then I'm telling it to group it in that particular manner and the dimensions activity date. I do that, it takes what's coming in and spits out a crosstab. <coughs> so that's all that's necessary. Notice that I don't have to tell it what the actual headers for the crosstab are, it figures that out dynamically. All right. Um, yeah, yeah, so the other one that I haven't quite finished, because I haven't, yeah, I just I don't want to show it yet, because I haven't finished it, 
but um, I'm making a dashboard for cases. And if you've worked with City Case, you know, there, there's a whole list of the activity types which are permitted within a case. And you can go back and you can do an audit on an individual case and it will show you which activities have been done and when. But what it doesn't have that my client needs is a milestone, right? Because they don't need to know how many times they engaged in coaching or how many phone calls are part of the case. What they want to know is, have they reached this particular goal, this particular milestone? And if you don't have that activity entered in yet, it's kind of hard to produce that. But I've got a query built, which you know joins that up in the right manner. And I can show the client then which milestones they've reached and when, if it's scheduled at least or not, or if we haven't even gotten there, and thus build up a numerical score of progress through the case, and show that in one table. So you can glance at that and look at all of the cases and say, these people are making progress and these aren't. We've got to do something about them. Okay. Um, what else was I going to show you? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm kind of rushing through because I, I do have to fly out of here literally. Um, any questions about this before I show you the Data Explorer, which is the user-friendly click and build interface? How many different renders does it have? Um, I think there are about five of them. So there's a graph render, there's the cross tab, um, and there are various export versions, essentially, as well. Because this will allow you to export a CSV as various formats. I don't have those enabled yet. Well, let's go back to here. Oh, so, just to show you while we're, since we have a moment. Yeah, like I said, it's, it's complaining about some stuff. Eh, whatever, it'll figure it out. Um, each of these is a data source, aka a place where data blocks come from. And if I want to add one, I give it a name, I give it a title. The ones I had, was showing you, I had debug turned on, so it was dumping the whole query out for us. I tell it where those files are located, which directory they're in. And if, it's, if I'm connecting to a Drupal database, I don't have to do anything more than say, you're using Drupal, done. Um, if your database, um, if your CIVI CRM database is separate from your uh, Drupal one, then you, you know, do a PDO other than Drupal, connect to it that way. Then, I just was wondering, Shane, just because you have the Oracle ones there, do you need some drivers then on the server in order to do No, they're, they're built in. Right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, going back to that, um, you can connect to the Drupal, you can connect to Oracle, uh, PostRescue, and uh, Microsoft SQL, um, and then you can also just have data in XML, which it'll connect to. Um, I think that's mostly there because he provides his help files in XML and then he makes reports out of them. He's a little geeky in that way. <laughs> so I can appreciate that. Um, in the structure menu, it shows us all of the reports. Yay, it's a report listing. Okay, nothing super exciting about that. All right. The data one's interesting, and, and ignore all of the red, really. That's just something about the local settings right now. Um, it shows me all of the data blocks that I've got. And so these are all my parameter list ones. Like, oh, OK. Well, here we go. All right, so if in a report somebody wants to select a month by date, this is what they get. Or rather, this is the SQL query which is running. It only shows half of it. Um, when it parses this in, it's actually very clever. It takes the first one as the label, and the second one as the value. If I return two values, <coughs> so. 
Um, so you can play around and it's like, why is this not working? Is it understanding my code correctly? Why? Yes, it is. It looks like just what I wanted to return. Then, let's step back. If you are the mind to, guess what? It will let you edit from here. So you don't have to do it all via text editor. If you want to write it in text editor and dump it in and then use this version to get to it, so you don't have to FTP in to a remote server or something like that, here you go. All right? Um, it's not quite as friendly when it comes to the parameters because the XML file is the one that makes the parameters nice. But, okay, so there it is. If I go back to the reports tab, you know, I'd like to make a new report. And this is where users will be able to go, but I'm not letting them in there yet. And, you know, this is my silly report. report. Um, if I want to give it a category, you know, I can put in, for instance, you know, I have those other categories, Chicas, for instance, put in something there. Um, if there's an existing report, I can create it from that. I'm not going to. Oh, machine readable. Um, Click the data button, scroll past the mistaken error messages, find the data block that I want. Now notice this isn't super duper friendly, right? I mean, local CBCR of Drupal Chica School data. Uh, okay, sure. Um, I'm going to choose Chica Schools. And let's see, do I, I don't remember my membership numbers. Ah, there we go. So, badoom, I'm halfway to making a report in the UI based off of that. Um, I'm not going to go through all of the other steps, but you can also define via this interface which renderer to use. If they're supposed to make this into a cross tab, if I want a graph out of it, etc. Um, and you can specify all the parameters. So you have the potential here to write those SQL blocks to get that logic in place. And in effect, I see this as the equivalent of the BOW or DAO files in CBCRM, the specifications. Put that logic in there. And then uh, let somebody deal with it as they wish. All right? Um, the only other thing. Oh, right, this one doesn't really oh. That makes me feel sad. So you can see that I've got this all locked down. So this is the cross-tab table that it generates on the fly. And you can also see that I've got the fields marked up. So if this particular, this is an activity on a given date, well, you know what, Juliet, this is an error. You actually did not attend on that day. So we're going to come in here and, uh, you know, potentially remove you. I'm trying to get them to do this as individual activity for each contact, and they're having trouble doing that. Um, that's how that one goes together. So it all comes off of one query. And then it's just it's a presentation. I'm sorry? For the MG, it's only in Drupal. It's only Drupal. Yeah. Because it does not have a lot of dependencies on Drupal. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. So. Um, the dependencies for it are very minimal. Well, let's go look at our modules. Gee, Farina requires itself. 
as the PDF generation? Um, I haven't tried it yet. It uses, you know, a library. Um, I haven't seen any problems with it in the comments so far. Or, or I should say, I haven't noticed any. I haven't gone looking. So, um, this is the experimental query builder, where, you know, it's the, the click interface. Okay. So I've got five minutes. Any other questions? Anything else you want to try and focus on, highlight, anything? In your research, uh, have you found that there's like an API or something that you read your own rigors if you want it? No, I haven't. Yeah. I haven't gotten there. I haven't needed to. Yes, Lola. I saw a link on the on Watchful page for contribute your reports. Is there a way, is there a built-in way with this for people to package up a bunch of reports and uh, contribute them? Or no, there isn't. But this is one thing I was realizing is that, gee, you know, the data blocks, if they're all, you know, referencing uh, CBCRM, they're, they're very portable. And if I were to get them tidied up enough and put them up on GitHub or something, we could pool them. And yeah, you could download a bunch of pre-built SQL blocks, which would have a bunch of standard queries in it, and go from there. Yeah. So you could replicate the standard template reports? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 What, what I'm thinking is because it seems to have so few dependencies on Drupal, we could almost kind of you could force it into the library your... and make it available in CBCRM so we can use it with WordPress and Drupal. Well, yeah, yeah. And somewhere at the back of my up. mind is, you know, CBCRM yeah. version 5. And wow, I, I like it. Yeah, we could, the, the, the query file you showed us as well as the display file, they're like, Completely disconnected from Drupal. Yes. You just need to They're have the web and get on top Drupal. of it and insert yeah. it in a CCRM page and we're good. Yeah. The only connection it has to Drupal really is it's using the Drupal PDO. And this it's hijacking mm -hmm. that and it follows it through. Um, but you can have your own PDO. There you go. Yeah. It also uh, has the access um, option you can put in there. That's probably hard coded to use the Drupal. Access. That is hard coded to use the Drupal uh, permissions structure, but um, I don't know how hard it would be to work on that one. Yeah, because we have the easily. Yeah, abstracted city permissions or. Yeah, the city permissions. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. The city permissions boil down to they each do. of the permission systems for the CMSs. Yeah. 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 So yes, do you know? What it's licensed? Offhand, I don't. Okay. Let's look. That's easy to do, right? Unless you're on a mobile phone. Oh, <laughs> well, all right, there we go. Fair enough. Um, da -da 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 -da. Does it. Where does it, where did module work like that? The info the module file. Okay, well, um, yeah, I was just looking in notes. Well, we can figure that one out easily enough. Read license. Where's read license? Oh, read license. Thank you. There you go. Perfect. No, so, so the question for you is, can you hijack that then? <laughs> <laughs> you see static in that vein, you see yes. feature releases, you see the yes. last, um, last contribution was a week ago. Yeah. Um, in roughly three years, he's gone up to version 4.2, from version 1-ish to 4.2. Um, he's quite active, the main author is quite active, he has a co-maintainer. Um, the number of sites that are adopting it creeps upward every day. It's not all that much, like 650 sites that have adopted it, but um, I expect it to go up today. Um, so, but you know, 650 sites is pretty stable, and the 
the comment boards are well tended as well. So, all right. Okay, cool. So, with that, I'm going to close because it's time to close. And I'm going to come right back to this. And so, my conclusion it's a viable tool, it's a tool, right? Like every other tool, you use it when it's appropriate, okay? Doesn't necessarily replace the other ones, but you might have a, a good use for it. Um, I really think that that report builder could work for savvy users. I'd like to see it move out of the experimental status. Um, I think that will be coming pretty soon. Um, and yeah, there's that potential for community sharing with the data blocks, okay? And really, seriously, I gotta fly. I'm out of here now. So um, any other questions? Great, via email, please, okay? Um, thank you very much for your time and attention, and uh, we'll see you.